Why is no one talking about PSDT templates? There are a ton of them available online, but I want you to be the master of Photoshop and learn how to create one instead. PSDT templates allow you to take the most complex Photoshop effects and turn that into a preset in the form of a template. In this video, we'll learn how to create a PSDT file from scratch in the form of a simple effect. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop, here we have a photo of a plastic texture. Let's drag it and drop it into Photoshop. If you wish to download this and follow along, you know what to do. Check the links in the description. Now let's unlock the background layer. Right now it is locked. You cannot move it. You cannot do anything about it. Sorry about the sound. Just click on the lock right there and it's unlocked. Let's create a background color. Turn it off for now. Click on the adjustment layer icon and let's go with solid color. And here, by the way, I'm inspired by a Photoshop effect that I saw on Adobe stock. So we are going to go with something similar like an orange for now. You can change all of this later. Let's bring it at the bottom. Right above it, let's create one more solid color adjustment layer. And this is something that we are going to turn off later. Select white, hit OK. Above that, you can add any text you want. With the help of the text tool right here, Gilroy Heavy is one of my favorite fonts. Let's click here and you can type whatever you want. I'm just going to type in maybe plastic. With the help of the move tool, let's make it bigger. Control or Command T and let's make it larger from right here. This looks about right. And let's keep it in the middle. Hit enter or return. Now, since we want the ability to change this later, we will convert this into a smart object. Now, there's a reason why I created that white background. If I were to select this text, right click on it and choose convert to smart object. And if I were to open this by double clicking here, it will only keep that area. And if I wanted a text larger than that or two lines or three lines or even more, then it would be an issue. I would have to use the crop tool to expand it. It would be an entirely different mess. So let's close this. Let's go back to where we were. Press Ctrl or Command Z to go back to where this was not a smart object. Instead of just converting this layer into a smart object, select both of these layers. So select the plastic layer, hold the controller command and select the white solid fill layer and then right click and choose convert to smart object. Now when you double click on it and you open it, you have the full thing. And if you want, you can just delete this. Select this layer, press the delete key and controller command S. You can even close it and now when you get back, you just have that. So convenient. Now it is time for us to create the texture. And one of the first steps I recommend is to already create a displacement layer so that later when we need it, we can apply it. A displacement layer allows you to apply the peaks and valleys on any kind of graphic like the text right here. So let's turn on this layer for now. Right click on it and duplicate it. Go to duplicate layer and simply create a new document. You can name it whatever you want. Let's name it displacement. Hit OK. Now it is the peaks and valleys that we are trying to preserve. You can choose to blur it slightly or keep it the way it is. That is something I leave it to you. For right now, just save it as a PSD. That is of extreme importance. Go to File, Save As, and we are going to save it as displacement.psd. If it is not already a Photoshop document, you want to make sure that right next to Format, it says Photoshop. Click on Save. Hit OK and now you can close this. Back to the file that we were working on. Let's rename this layer as texture and change the blend mode to something like overlay. That looks okay. Change it. And you can decrease the opacity slightly because that is going to be too much. So somewhere around 40% is nice. Now let's make a copy of this by pressing Ctrl or Command J. And this is where you apply the brightness of this. So let's change the blend mode to screen. Screen is a blend mode which brightens stuff. Let's increase the opacity to 100. Oh my gosh, that starts to look amazing. For simplicity, you can also rename the layers like texture overlay. This one is for texture brightening or screen. If you want some additional shine, depending upon the texture that you're working with, you can make a duplicate of this by pressing Ctrl or Command J. That looks pretty darn cool. But I only wanted it in the middle areas. For it, hold the Alt key or the Option key and then click on the Mask button. This allows you to create a negative mask or a black mask. Then you can take the brush, take a soft round brush with white as the foreground color. Just paint over the areas where you need it. That's all. This is nice. I'm going to keep it this way. Now to keep it organized, first of all, let's rename this Focused Screen and let's group all of this. With the first one selected, Hold the shift key, the last texture, all of them in a row are selected. Press Ctrl or Command G and let's rename this texture. 
Now we need to mold the text according to the texture. The first step here is to create a localized blur effect. What we want to do is that for the areas that are further away from the plastic, those areas would be more blurred. For it, let us select this layer. And by the way, since you're turning this into a template, you can just rename this to your text so that whenever you're modifying this template, you know what to do. Let's go to filter, blur gallery, field blur. One of the great advantages of field blur is that you can apply it at multiple points. A lot of people just apply it once and that's it, but you can actually create a point here with a different blur amount, another point here with a different blur amount. That's pretty amazing. So I'm gonna increase that a bit slightly. And this one, we are going to decrease it a little bit. At this point, we have a larger amount of blur, like 73, but at the top, we want a smaller amount of blur. And according to the grooves of the plastic, you can work through the blur amount. So I've made a few changes and this is how it looks for me. Once you're satisfied with all of your blur points, hit OK. Now this, my friend, was only the first step. What about the grooves, the ups and the downs of the texture onto the text? We have to apply that too. For that, let's turn off the texture for now. And with the Your Text layer selected, remember the displacement that we just created a while ago? We are going to apply that right here. Let's go to Filter, Distort, Displace. 40 by 40 is fine for now. We can reduce it or increase it and see what works. Let's keep it the way it is. Let's keep these settings the way they are. Hit OK. And then let's pick the displacement.psd that we just created and hit open. If you find that the ups and the downs are way too sharp, you can always blur the displacement and save it again, apply it again. But in this case, this looks fine. I think we can go with that. All of these textures can work in our favor. See all those? Now when you turn on the texture and you zoom out, oh my gosh, this gets so darn much better and so much more realistic. Now there are a couple more things we can do. But before we finalize this, let us do some finishing touches. Starting with the color. I feel that the color is a bit too reddish. So let's double click here and we can make it slightly more yellowish like so and bring it right here. Once you're happy with the color and once it starts to remind you of OJ, hit OK. The next thing I recommend doing is adding some grain to it. For it, right inside of the texture group, you can do it inside of it to make things uniform. With the topmost layer selected, press Ctrl, Shift N, Command, Shift N on a Mac to create a brand new layer. Let us name this grain, change the blend mode to overlay and check fill with overlay neutral color. Hit OK. You don't see anything on the canvas, but you do see a gray layer here. Why so? Because overlay is a blend mode that hides everything that is 50% gray. And here you have 50% gray. If you change the blend mode to something like normal, you'll be able to see it. But once you change it to overlay, you don't. It brightens the brighter parts, darkens the darker parts. And inside of this, we are going to create the grain. But before we do, let's go to filter, convert for smart filters so that when we apply the grain, we can change the values later. Go to filter, noise, add noise. Let's go with 32, uniform, monochromatic. That's fine, hit OK. But the noise is just way too sharp once you zoom in. So let's apply a slight blur to it by going to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. One pixel is fine, hit OK. See the blur makes it so much more natural. And there we have that noise applied. If you feel that the dark areas are way too dark, you can make a copy of the grain layer by pressing Ctrl or Command J and then change the blend mode to something like screen but this can be too much. So let's decrease the opacity to something like even 12. That helps slightly. And at this point in time, you can go back to the texture focused, which was brightening it too much. And you can reduce the amount of that. Actually, I would go with 72% there. That looks more realistic. And you can make as many changes you want. I would like to open the blur gallery by double clicking here. I feel that I've blurred some areas way too much. We can select those areas and we can reduce or increase those amounts. And that is the advantage of converting all of those layers into a smart object. Once you're happy, hit OK. Now this feels like it has a bit more character. Now how do we turn this into a preset or a template? First of all, let's clean everything up. Let's close the group. Close this by clicking here. It looks pretty clean. First things first, let's save a master copy of this as a PSD by going to File, Save As. And this is something that I personally recommend. Up to you whether you want to do it or not. Plastic texture.psd is fine. Click on save. Now this is just a regular PSD file. If you were to open it in Photoshop and make changes to it, you would make changes to the PSD file. For instance, if I just open this here, 
the one that we saved, and we change the color to something else like blue. That also looks nice. Again, whatever you like, hit OK. And then we save it by pressing Ctrl or Command S. It changes the main PSD file. If we go back to our finder, you will notice that this is changed now. Let's go back to how it was and save it. Now here's the difference between a PSD file and a PSDD file. And there are two ways of creating it. One is actually outside of Photoshop. If your extensions in files are visible, if you have not hidden it with your operating system, you can just make a copy of this by selecting it, pressing Ctrl or Command C, Ctrl or Command V. You're simply making another copy and you can just rename it. Plastic, template, and instead of PSD, just add a T at the end. Hit enter or return and choose use PSDT. Now there's something special about this. Another way to create it from inside of Photoshop is that when you're working with the main file, you can go to file, save as, and when you're saving it as a Photoshop document, you can just add T towards the end. And let's name it plastic texture 2.psdt, save. Hit OK. And the next time you open a PSDT file, see what happens. This is the plastic template.psdt, right? Focus on the name. If I were to open this, see, it creates a brand new document, untitled one. And now, even if you try to click on File, Save, it will allow you to create a brand new document. It will not update the PSDT template that we had saved. Every time you open it, it will create a brand new document without harming the main file. And here you can change the text to whatever you wish. You double click here, double click on the T and let's change it to texture, control or command S. I just clicked outside to deselect. And once you close it, it's updated. Oh my gosh, that looks pretty darn good. And the great part, this is a brand new document. You can change the color or just keep it the way it is. And then you can save it as a brand new document. If you press control or command S, it will prompt you to create a brand new document. And let's name this texture texture because why not? You can then export it as a JPEG, PNG, depending upon what you're looking for. So that's how PSDT templates work. We all know that PSD stands for Photoshop document. The T at the end in PSDT simply stands for Photoshop document template. When you open any PSDT file, it doesn't tamper the main document. It creates a copy for you, which is unsaved and untitled. But what if you want to make changes to the main template file, to the main document? Here's how you do it. Let's go back to our finder. Here's the PSDT file, right? So let's say you want to change the core of this, change the template. Just rename it and remove the T. It's back to a PSD file. And now when you open that, you're opening the main file. So that's how PSDTs work. I hope this was clear to you. And if you're a Piximperfect Pro member, you'll have this template available for you to download. Just check the link in the description or log into your portal in the YouTube section, exclusive download section, you'll find it. And if you're not a Pro member yet and want to master Photoshop from start to finish and beyond, definitely check out Piximperfect Pro at piximperfect.com. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Until then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.